What did I just do? I don't know. Hi, it's me. I show my face now, apparently. Um, so the last couple of months of videos you have seen were pre-recorded when Kayleen was working here. She's left, as you saw in the video about her leaving. And um, this is the first video back, basically. I've been taking a couple of months to uh, work on my house. I worked 15 years and took three weekend vacations, so I needed a little time. Um, as you can see, the workshop is just all boxes and stuff because I had tenants move in, uh, roommates, and a lot of my stuff is in here. I have to clean it out. Um, in this video, though, we ha I have a job to do, and this is going to be a white label job. So what a white label job is, is it's something that you make that is branded with someone else's brand. So I know I look haggard as heck here, but just ignore that. Um, so basically, there is a barbershop in Canada that is also adding some lifestyle products and they would like some wallets with their brand on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I built my business doing white label products for other companies without going into debt. And a big part of that is you wait till the job to buy the tooling. Um, now I can't give you prices because these dies that I use are 10 years old now, but I can tell you that they're from Texas custom dies. They've never been sharpened and there are my most popular two wallets. So they have 50, 60, 70,000 clicks on them and they still work like a champ, you'll see. So we're gonna get into it. Uh, Melissa's gonna help, she's over here, she's still here. Um, and uh, we're gonna bang out this order. We have to navigate the uh, blow up mattress and all this stuff here, but everything we need, this is my die, cutting station. So we're going to be cutting die, we're going to be die cutting these pieces and hand sewing. Now what you can do to save money is you can get dies without the stitching holes in them. That's a standard die. And then you can machine sew or you can hand sew. If you hand sew, you have to take the time to punch out all the holes. If you look at the dies that I have, we're going to be using this one and this one. They have the die holes already in them and these are custom made so you can the thing is, you can, they're more expensive. Each hole is $8. But this is a 10-year-old set. You can see by just how chewed up the edges are. And the way that they're made is that if anything ever goes wrong, if I take the mold release out, it's a two-part die. So I can unscrew these screws here and take out the stitch holes and only punch the outside so I can hand sew them as well. So that's the secret to how to um, scale hand sewn leather goods, uh, for me at least. And so we're gonna need this die set. We're gonna need this guy. This one is our just our card sleeve. And you can also get a few dies and buckle guy. Uh, we went over this already, but this is the this is also made by Texas Customs. This is their circular coaster set uh, cutting die. Um, these are much cheaper, about $100, something like this. I don't even know what it's gonna run you, probably five or $600, but this order will cover that. I'm not going to take any profit off of this order. I'm going to buy this die with this order, right? So that's how I started out. Obviously now I would take profit because I've spent 10 years. So it's paying, now it's making profit. But all of these dies were bought when I had a customer that wanted a large enough quantity of them that I could afford to buy the die set. So I would get the 50% down payment, I would order the die, then I would fulfill the order. And that's how I built out my whole die collection, which goes all the way down, there are some big guys in here, um, without going into any debt. And that's good because you don't wanna burden yourself with that. And I've said this over and over again, if you go into debt for this stuff, um, you're gonna be at mercy of the market to make what's trendy in sells, and it's gonna hinder your creativity in designing stuff that maybe sells better and is a more original design, but you're just gonna be rushing to fill those orders to make that money to pay off of all that debt. Stamp drawer, and I had the magnesium stamp made. Now magnesium stamps are a little bit cheaper than solid brass stamps, and they're good for when you're not doing runs over 10,000. They start to degrade around 10,000 pieces, however, 
I have a lot of stamps that have done 10,000 pieces that are made out of magnesium and they work just fine still. So I'm a big fan of magnesium, but it's a good way to offer your client their own logo without breaking the bank. Okay, so I have the leather that we're using, which is a five to six ounce. This is our Red Lantern. Um, we don't say where it comes from, but it does come from the US. And basically, all I'm gonna do is I've cut it into a strip that I know will fit three of this die cut out. Now we need 25 of these, and this is where the real time savings comes in because here's one that I already cut out, and you can see how it has all the holes punched out. Now, if it didn't have the holes punched out, I would have to have a whole other step of gluing, punching, and then sewing. But by adding the holes and taking that one cost up front, for the last 10 years, I've been able to create these and offer them for about $12 wholesale because it takes the work out, but it remains hand sewn. Now, you can prioritize what your customers want. If you think that your customers want a lower price and don't care so much about the hand sewn part, then of course you can machine sew these and save even more time and offer a better price or make a better markup. For me, I have always been hand sewn. I don't know how to use a sewing machine and are kind of the vibe of, of my um, production pieces, I call them, has always been kind of a sort of Boy Scout kit from the 60s vibe. So a little bit chunkier thread, round holes, and that's what we're giving these guys because that's what they came to us for. Wondering why I'm using the Lira press and not the Buckeye press, which is over there with that hand. Um, it's because this press is still set up low. You can see how my bench has two levels. And this is, if you set your press up too high, uh, manual press, you'll end up uh, tearing your rotator cuffs after a few years, which is what happened to me. So I'm just waiting on a new press to come in for here. And then over there, that press is set up at a different height for using the brands. But you can see, if I come over here, it took about seven minutes and we have 25 blanks with this holes all in them. So I believe that die costs about $500 to have made and it pretty much just saved me $250 in labor just in that time because cutting and punching every single one of those 25 pieces would have been easily four or five hours work. And then I also burnished the top and bottom edges so we are ready to use the Dusty because I haven't been doing other work the last two months. Um, the Buck Guy Press, which is set up perfectly for stamping. So it gets just the right depth, but then it stops. So now it's time to brand our card holders. You can see right there, right there. Hold on. Yep, there we go. How nice that looks. And that's because I have this specific press set up for just the right tension so that when I push it down and pull it up, it will give me the right impression. And it may seem silly to have multiple of the same side presses and stuff, but if you wanna do this kind of work, it helps to have multiple of the same tools so that you can go boom, 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 boom. Um, I'm filming this almost in real time. I've been in the shop doing this job for about 30 minutes now. And because I have all of these tools set up, in a way that everything flows well, I put an arrow facing up on my stamp so I know that it goes up. And then on this die, you can tell I'm not using any jigs. I'm just going to the third stitching hole and centering it. And then all I have to do is swing the arm over, press down as far as it goes, and lift up. And we have yet another perfect stamp. So, Again, now I know we're sponsored by Buckle Guy, but I did buy this press and I bought it after I had a project that, or a white label pr project that was going to pay for it. I didn't take profit, but I also didn't spend my own money. And again, 
I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the less debt you can take while setting up um, your shop, the more freedom it's going to give you in making things of your own name that are unique and different than everybody else. These jobs are the jobs that I used 15 years ago to buy all of my equipment. And besides this press, um, everything else in here is about 10 to 12 years old. Um, that the old Weaver press actually, I retired it when we did our 15 year anniversary run, but uh, Buckle Guy has a few surprises in the wings. So there's no new press there yet, but there will be. Um, that's been welded together four or five times. So, you know, I've repaired it a bunch and it's time for a new one. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna go through now and brand all these and then it's ready to sew. That's pretty much it. I've, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but I burnished the tops and the bottoms as well. I'm, I might've mentioned that. Filming alone is hard. You guys gotta give me some leeway here. I appreciate how, uh, how excited everyone is to see how I'll do on my own. Uh, I started quarter in 2008, 2007, and I worked alone for seven years before Kaylina came here. And uh, it's interesting going back to that because when Kaylina started, I didn't have a lot of these tools. And I'm realizing now that the shop, this jobs like this, I can do a lot of this stuff on my own without an assistant because I've set up the shop to be just so efficient. And it takes work. It's not something that just happens overnight. You have to buy one machine at a time. But if you're in it for the long run, it is absolutely worth investing in tools like this. I mean, this press is a thousand bucks. It's long, long-term goal. Um, you know, this job is gonna be more than a thousand dollars profit. So if I needed to buy this press, I could buy it with the profit from this job. Um, and making the arrow on the stamp is always a good idea. <laughs> Cause as you can see, um, I tend to almost put it upside down a lot. All right, so we have our pieces cut out and here's the fun part. I always have, let me see if I can zoom out here. That's about as, there we go. So this is just a little tray. It's nice to, when you find these at the dollar store or wherever. Um, and I'm going to put all my pieces in a tray, like this. I have all my thread in my living room. And uh, I'm going to go watch True Blood for the first time and sew them up. Because sometimes it's nice to just hang out on the couch and sew things up. We have kittens. We have one. They're scout. Oh, hey, Mr. Marty. Hi, boys. What do I have? What? Oh, there's Coop. Oh, that's Marty. That's Cooper. Hey, Coop. Hi, Mr. Marty. So, I'm in the middle of building my apartment here. <laughs> but, um, as you can see, I've got the card sleeves all done. So all I have left to do is to get these sewn up and we'll have a finished order. So don't feel like you have to sit in your shop all the time. Um, if you use, I don't use a stitching pony. Um, if you check the channel, there's the method that I use to stitch. Um, there's a whole video on it. And so that's it. We're just gonna get these sewn up. Okay, so here's the setup. Nicely organized, finished pieces. Took the watch off, took a couple of times because I'm getting old and had a sandwich that didn't agree with me for lunch. Um, thread, extra thread, true blood, I wasn't kidding, and um, my pile to sew tonight. I have some needles threaded and ready to go. have the first wallet ready to fold up and sew. My LDH snippers, which if you haven't picked up a set of those on Buckle Guy, go for it, they're the best. Um, yeah, I guess the thing I'm showing you this setup because this is how I worked for the first seven years. And um, this is how I'm going back to working for a little while. Get the stuff done in the shop and then just come in and be comfortable. Put your show on. And, uh, you know, you don't always have to. If it works out for you to sit in your shop on a bench and sew, that's totally cool. But if you're doing work like this, um, there's no reason why you can't throw on a show 
in your living room, let your cats run around, and uh, truly work from home and still make really nice work. Um, we're going to finish these off in the shop when we burnish all the edges, and we'll package them up and make them nice. Um, but yeah, for now I'm going to just be sewing and watching, watching my show. It's nighttime now, and we have our nice tray of white label products. This is a 50 piece unit order. Now usually I do 50 pieces per style, but for new clients, I'll split it up and I'll let them do two styles to make the 50 pieces. Um, and 50 is the number that takes me, uh, that makes sense for me to make the order. Um, anything less than that doesn't really make sense to make the order because in an order like this, your profit is coming from bat batching everything, right? So making everything, you know, all at once. So it was about four hours, five hours of sewing, and now I am going to token all the edges and then pack them up. So we'll get to doing that now. You guys can stare at my sweet new ostrich shirt that I got at the flea market today. Um, so I'm going to do my best to speak over the burniture. But what I'm doing is, I'm just taking a little bit of token on, putting it on the edges. And with this burnisher, you see we have different sizes of slot, right? So I'm going to start at the biggest side, or at the biggest slot, then I'm just going to work my way down. until I get to the one that the whole piece is fitting into, which is this one right here. This is too small. So I'm gonna go big first. That gets all the flat parts. And then work my way down and this will round over our edges without having to use an edge bevel. Now you have to understand there's all sorts of, you know, details that you can do, right? So, for example, I believe I charged uh, about $25, uh, $24 for this three pocket wholesale, so it'll be $48 to $50 retail. And for the card sleeve, I charge about 12 bucks. So, you know, this is a pretty affordable wholesale order. If someone were to want these beveled and edge dyed and all that, I, I can do it, but it's just going to cost more. And to be honest with you, a lot of that's just, well not to be honest with you, it's an objective truth. Um, that's not a quality thing, that's just a, a pretty thing. So these card wallets I've been making like this for over 10 years, and if you get that main thread going or some Ritza or some, some a good poly thread with a nice saddle tan, uh, saddle tan leather, front saddle tan, um, veg tan leather, this happens to just be a saddle tan color. Um, these are gonna, they last forever, they don't, no amount of burnishing or anything like that is going to affect the quality of how long they last. So in this instance, it's kind of nice to offer your customer, say hey, you know, you might want to go for the bigger order, you, not the customer, you might want to go for the more expensive spendy order. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to say to tell the customer, hey, why don't you try my production quality stuff first? And if you want to bring in some higher finished, higher priced, higher tier goods after that, see how things sell, we can do that next. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is have a white label customer that's just stuck with product that can't sell. Um, and then the other thing that I like to do is I had an extra couple of these, and I'll show you 
all the how I cut everything out and all the waste that I ended up having. But I always try to include an extra two or three of, you know, whatever, in orders like this in case one doesn't meet their standards, which of course I'm going to quality check everything. And at worst, they have a replacement on hand for the amount that they ordered, and at best they have a couple extra. And that's always nice to start building a relationship with, with your white label customer. So I'm just going to keep burnishing until these are done, and uh, I'll catch up with you when it's time to bag them, tag them, and send them out the door. So everything is burnished up nicely. All the token all, we have the whole order done. So usually what I'll do is I'll ask the customer if they want to keep the stamp, so I'll send the stamp with them, or if they want me to keep the stamp for reorders because they bought the stamp, it's theirs. Uh, in this case, I'll be keeping the stamp for reorders. So I just have some nice cloth bags. I'll put each one in a cloth bag and send it off. Kind of an anachromatic ending here, but that's basically how you do it. So we have these beautiful three pockets. We have these nice card sleeves. And that one's even got a little tannery brand in it there. But, um, yeah. So this is how I do white label projects and how I funded basically my whole shop. It's still a mess, but um, just little by little. And the way, this is going to be the last clip of the video, but the reason I like this is not going into debt is great. But it also kind of gives you a measurement of the tools that you need and the tools that you don't need. Because it can be very easy to look at tools and go, you know, if I had that, I could do X, Y, Z. But if you don't have X, Y, Z to do, then you don't need the tool. So for about three years, I would wait until I needed the tool because I had a job that would fund it. And now, 15 years later, this stuff doesn't happen overnight. I'm able to bang out a job like this in a couple of days. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm going to be kind of vlog style for a while. I have some backup videos that are going to be um, the normal style. And I'm happy to be back to work. And I'm happy you guys stuck with me while I took my little break. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.